be making basics. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Be Making Basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, please do me a favor. Go ahead and subscribe as well as give me a thumbs up if you like today's content. Now today, what we're going to be covering is a secret way to make better melodies in Logic Pro 10. Again, I said a secret way because most people are going to overlook this way to make melodies. Now, to demonstrate this secret way to make melodies in Logic Pro 10, what we're going to do is go ahead and create a software instrument uh, track. So we're going to create a software instrument and under instrument, you can go with a default patch or you can even go with Alchemy. Let's just go ahead and click on Alchemy. It's basically a sound bank for those who are new. We're going to push create and here we go. Now, I have this keyboard up because I'm going to be using musical typing. Um, I mean, excuse me, I'm using my MIDI keyboard. And so, so you can see what I'm pushing. I'm just going to put the musical typing up there. You can put musical typing up too if you push command K. And you can use your, um, you know, your keyboard to play notes and stuff like that if you don't have a MIDI keyboard. Anyway, I'm going to put that right there. And then let's just talk about this real quick. Now, uh, say like if we're making a trap beat, bells are like a um, real go-to sound here. So I'm going to scroll through here and we'll try to find some dope bells. So that's cool enough. Basically, um, what I'll do is now tell y'all the secret way to improve your melodies. So if you look right over here in the inspector window, we can also go to the mixer window, right? And I'm on this bell track. Usually um, we might come over here and swap out sounds and stuff like that. But if you go to your MIDI effects option right here and click that, there's several different ways that you can instantly start improving your melodies in Logic Pro 10. Let's start off with this arpeggiator. So if you click that, there's a lot of cool things you could do here. So say if you pay, play a basic minor chord. So let's start off with C minor chord. So that's obviously a quick way that you could, you know, um, Come up with a better melody just do our um using the arpeggiator obviously you can come up in here and do different things We can also come over here and make the pattern fast or slow. In addition, you can come over here and, you know, change the way those, uh, those notes are going to be arpeggiated. Um, you can have a little swing to it, different things like that. So this is one way that you can make some better melodies instead of playing a basic chord here. You know, like it would just be this. You can turn this on now and it'll just mix this up some. So that's simple, but let's go ahead and keep it moving. Now we also have this chord trigger. If you click on that, this is basically gonna help you play like different um, chord progressions for the most part. So let's just type in piano right here. And if I look on this or even here, when I push any of these notes, I could just do a basic chord progression like one, four, five, one. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, and you basically, it plays those chords for you. If you do multi. As you can see here, those notes are, gonna, are not gonna play. So from C3 to C whatever, um, that's not gonna play. But from the range of C1 to C3, it will play those chord progressions. Add 
this, but I will just click it on this single right here. Um, you can also come over here and there's also little cool things you can do. We got guitar open chords. We got keyboard uh, voicing. So I can do like a blues left hand and a blues right hand. So let's check. So you can get to see here is if you change these sounds up and then play around with some of these different types of chord progressions or types of chords, um, you can get real fun in here when it comes to, or it can get real fun in here when it comes to creating melodies and improving your melodies in Logic Pro 10. This with this simple little hack going to the MIDI effects. So that's one thing you could do um, as well. And then I have another one, Note Repeater. Okay, and it's a real simple one, but you can do cool little things. So, You can change how fast the note goes or whatever. You can also transpose it up. Yeah, you can come up with a lot of sauce just playing around with these for sure. Um, again, this has like different little presets as well that you can play around with. Now, a lot of these other options that you can also do some cool stuff with them as well, but I'm really just going to tell you to focus on this arpeggiator, the chord trigger and the note repeater. So like you have this other one modulator, this is going to be doing different things to the actual sound, you know, messing with the LFOs and stuff like that. So that's uh, something you can do. And then of course we do have these other different options here. So let's just see how it's sounds. So like, like with this modulator, this is probably more so like for um, sound design type, type stuff. So taking a melody maybe that you already have and you just slap this modulator on there and mess around with the different presets and it can make your beat sound a whole lot doper. Um, this is Mod Lifter. I didn't really see a whole lot that this does, honestly, so I don't I didn't want to focus too much um, attention on it. You got this randomizer, um, which I didn't feel like it did, it did too much as well to really super update your, your melodies. Um, Scripter, I'll leave that alone as well. This is kind of like going right in within Logic and running script and, you know, that's not something I would mess with. Transposer, pretty basic. I would leave that alone as well. And then the Velocity Processor, okay? It's kind of like a compressor for the most part, but um, that's not necessarily going to affect the, uh, the overall the melody. So, like I said, you want to focus on these three, the arpeggiator, chord, trigger, and then modulator. Or not, excuse me, not modulator, but the note repeater. My bad. But yeah, that's going to be today's video. I hope this helps y'all out. Um, I feel like I could probably, you know, cook up a whole lot of sauce with these, uh, these different options right here. And man, this just goes to show you that there's some stuff that's right in front of you. That if you just actually go in here and start playing around with some of the stuff, you'll find some goodies. Like who, if you can leave and leave it right there in the comments, let's be honest, man. Have you ever come over here to the MIDI effects and then clicked on that and see what this stuff is? You have never done it. Be honest with me, man. Quit playing. You know, you know, you haven't, bro. So that's just one of the things you can do, man, to just help out with your melody. Sometimes just clicking on here and even looking at your settings and seeing what you can do in there as well. I mean, 
There's a lot of wealth of stuff that you can do. There's really no excuse as far as uh, not being able to make dope beats with Logic Pro 10 uh, or with any of these dolls, but specifically since we're focused on Logic Pro 10. There's no excuse, man. But anyway, y'all, I appreciate you. Make sure that you go to my site, beatmakingbasics.com. We do have courses that you can download um, and purchase there. Um, unlike you know having to come to YouTube, once you download the course, Everything will be there for you, and you can actually watch it on your own time without having to have an internet connection, without having to watch any ads or anything like that. So that's going to be a good benefit for getting those courses. Um, I also have sound kits, and we're going to be dropping some new content on the site this month. So make sure you keep on coming back and seeing what we got going on. Last but not least, I do want to let you know that we are doing one-on-one -on -one beat making lessons. So if you have a little extra cash to spend and you want to invest that into your beat making uh, skills, you know, try doing this one on one beat making lesson with me, because this way you can actually ask questions live back and forth. And, you know, I can review your beats or, you know, you can see maybe some beats that I made and vice versa. And I can kind of help you on a more intimate level, learn how to make better beats. So anyway, appreciate you all. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.